Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. We are, right now, three short weeks away from the release of Star Wars Legion. This is a Star Wars based war game. Uh, it's, right now it's Rebels versus the Empire. Uh, those of us who've been following the game are hoping, I think we're fairly certain, that there will be other factions released down the road. But right now it's going to be Stormtroopers versus Rebels with some commanders like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, that kind of thing. Uh, there are also vehicles like uh, the, 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 bike, the speeder bikes and the air speeders and things like that. So I've placed my pre-order. I'm anxiously awaiting my parts and my game so that I can get to painting. And in the meantime, I'm also in a serious crunch to create terrain. Now, uh, there is a company out there, and I just went blank on their name, but I will put a link in the description below. Uh, they are making some incredible uh, Imperial, I think, well, there is some Tatooine style uh, terrain, you know, like this. Uh, they're making 3D printed or files for 3D printers. And uh, I got to see some at my local gaming store recently. Uh, I visited and they had a whole table covered with this stuff. Um, I'll put some pictures right here. I'm just going to talk over. But, you know, it, they have a sort of like an arena kind of walled section. And then they also have uh, the bunkers and they have some high up uh, elevated platforms and then some random buildings and things like that. All of it, you know, you 3D print it you paint it, put it on your tabletop, and you're good to go. All of it has a very Star wars -y, Star wars -y? Star wars -y feel. Is that a word? Star wars -y feel to it. And um, I'm glad to know that my local gaming store has that. They're painting it up right now, so it'll look great. But in the meantime, I'm also wanting to develop some of my own terrain so that I can play away from the gaming store or take my terrain to the gaming store and add some more to it. Now, in this episode, quite a while back, I showed you how to make this Tatooine-style building. This was made out of foam, right here, a chipboard and a foam, uh, you know, semicircular or a half sphere here. The only thing 3D printed on this was the door. I 3D printed that, but I could have made that out of foam, no problem. And then I also showed you this, the Imperial Bunker. Again, this was 99% made out of foam, chipboard, uh, some, some uh, uh, what do they call it, um, the thicker paper, uh, I just went blank on it, um, and the only 3D printed on items on this were these two circle pieces on top and these little greeble rectangular pieces that go around the edge, that was it. Those could easily be done in chipboard or what have you. Uh, so this turned out really well, I was very happy with it, I've had a lot of compliments on it. But the one thing that bugged me about this was I had to cut out these these little gr the grill here. I had to do that by hand. It was very tedious. Some of my viewers in the comments offered some options for, for creating these, which uh, were, were outstanding if you're doing it in paper or chipboard. But I felt that even though it looked okay, it could have been done a lot better if it were a 3D printed file. So what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to show you how I assembled a bunker that I 3D printed 100%. The whole thing is 3D printed. Uh, it is not a solid object like this. Like you're not printing this from the ground up. So what I've done is I've broken up my bunker into various pieces. There's a lot of them. Uh, let's get to the table and I want to show you how I'm going to glue up the Imperial bunker. All right, let me show you everything I've got so far. Uh, here is the roof. This is a single piece. You can see it has a lip in, that goes around. It's a hollow, not hollow, but it's it's recessed. The overhang goes over about a mm, little more than a quarter of an inch. This is the open doorway, okay? And this is the closed door, all right? You can choose to glue this in if you like, or you could put some Velcro and you know here and then put some Velcro uh, on the inside, and then you could swap out the doors as needed, open or closed. Or closed, open, uh, like that. Um, these are the four walls. Now I want to show you. I've used some painter's tape inside to secure them. Let me, let me pull this off like this. And as you'll notice, to do this, the painter's tape is not permanent. It's just to give it a structure, and I'll show you in a second. 
I, I basically take the two sides, put them together, make sure the end and the top are flush together, and then put a piece of tape down. And that makes that, that helps make sure that the wall bends at a you know 90 degree angle. And then of course on the very end, put another piece, bring the four together. You can actually flip it upside down like this and get that, uh, you can't see what I'm seeing, but I can line up the walls, press the tape down and get, and get it. There we go, done. All right, the tape serves a purpose. I, uh, I, I, there's, you can't glue in this seam. There's just not enough surface area. So what I have done is I have printed four of these pieces right here. They're cut on the bottom at an angle. These pieces will be super glued in to this gap on both edges, and that will provide strength and keep this square, okay? And I've got four of those, all right? They, took, they didn't take long to print at all. And then in here, I'm not gonna take these out yet, you can see the little rectangular greebles that will be glued around the edge here. And that is it. Each wall took two or less hours to print. The doors, this one took uh, about two hours, this one took about an hour and 20 minutes. The roof took three hours, 30 minutes. And then these pieces, I didn't even track. They were, I mean, we're talking like maybe less than 15 minutes for all of it. So you're looking at two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15, let's just say 15 hours. Um, I think it was actually a little less than that, but 15 hours of, of 3D printing. I could assemble this in Tinkercad as a solid object and print it from the ground up. But if, if you have a problem like a brownout or power goes out or some sort of kink in your 3D printer, you could mess up a really nice print when it gets halfway or three quarters or even almost to the end. You would just hate that. So I am gonna make these files available for free to you. Feel free to put them together in a CAD application and, and group them together as a solid object if you like, you can do that. So um, let me show you one final thing. You, you know, the door will go inside here. And the lid is designed, this piece around the lip is designed to rest on here. And it makes, and I I had to print this twice to get a really good fit. It, it goes down nice and, and secure. It's just a w little wiggle room, but it holds it together and allows you access to the inside, okay? So let's get to gluing this together. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue these pieces into the, um, the corners here and I'm going to use a uh, painter's tape again to hold them uh, so they don't move. What I'm going to do is just tear a bunch of these pieces and make them available to myself as I need. Okay, all right. So I'll start on this corner right here and I'm just going to put a bead of, of super glue down the edge and a bead down this edge. All right, and then I'll take this and I want the edge, that you'll, when you print these, you'll notice there's one edge that's sort of angled. That's supposed to be where the ground hits. So find it, it's like this. It goes in there just like that. Now you'll notice I didn't take it all the way up to this. Uh, that's so it does not impede the roof. All right, so there we go, it's in. And what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna tape that on there so it just doesn't come off. And the super glue shouldn't take too long to dry, uh, but there's one done. All right, so I'm gonna go and do them all. I'm gonna let that dry really well, okay. And what we'll tackle now is, I'm not going to glue my doors in. I am going to probably Velcro those so that they can be removed and replaced. So I'm just gonna sit that in there like that, just a placeholder. You could keep this inside it if you like. 
Uh, I am also not going to be gluing a base on this, like a chipboard bottom. I guess I could, and you could put things in there and use it as a um, you know storage or, or transportation, but I'm gonna leave it open like that. Uh, I might choose later to put some lighting in or something like that, I'm not sure. All right, up next, I need to glue all these little greebles around the roof. Well, this is uh, this is drying pretty well. You can see it's pretty pretty strong. Uh, I'm still gonna let the super glue get a good cure. I've glued the little greebles on all four sides. I forgot this piece. I can't believe this. This is a very thin shielding piece for the top roof. This piece right here with the circles. I designed. I put four on there. If you don't like four, you can go in and edit the STL and delete one out. You know, just cut it out. Uh, make it as many or as few as you like. I chose four, uh, figuring that uh, I'll just go ahead and put them on the STL file, and then if I make more, I might take one corner off or something like that. So this piece right here obviously will be glued right here centered on top uh, as the top of the bunker. Uh, let me go ahead and remove the tape here. Hopefully it doesn't pull off any of the pieces. You can see that the greebles are in place. There we go. All right. Make sure I don't mess them up on any side. There we go. All right, so all the greebles are glued onto the roof. Uh, let me put the roof on here. Okay, there it goes. This piece will be glued right there on the center. The door will come on the inside. And that is it for the assembly process. Now, of course, I need to prime it and paint it. There you go. Uh, that is the Imperial Bunker 3D printed version. Here's the shell and the lid goes on and it, it when you put it on, it, it'll it hold the base. See? It's good good and solid. I I was very, uh, I, it took me a couple tries to get the tolerances there, but I the CAD really let me know that it was gonna be a tight fit and it really is. I mean, you can take it off easy, but when you stick it on, it holds. And then of course, here's the open door and the closed door. You could glue these behind if you like, or just Velcro them in, or just leave them free and just swap them out as needed. But, um, you know, here's the handmade version that I made quite a few months back, and here is the 3D printed version. Uh, I tried to stick as close to this one, you know, with design as I could. The doorway's a little wider, four circles on top instead of two. I haven't done a wash on this one yet, but, uh, it's, it's nice, it has a hefty feel to it. This one's very light. This one's not super heavy, but it definitely you know has a, has a good heft to it. The files for this, I'm gonna make free down in the description below. I hope you can use them, those of you who have 3D printers. If you don't have a 3D printer and you really want one of these, you might wanna go out to a company like Shapeways or i.materialize.com, I think that's the website. Uh, there's a bunch of 3D printing companies that will take the files, you upload the files, and they print it, and they charge you a fee, and they ship it to you. Uh, but I like it. I hope it turned out it turned out great. And I've got some more Star Wars terrain coming very soon um, as we ramp up towards the March 22nd Legion date. So um, before I leave, I wanted to talk about a couple other things real quick. There are a lot of new terrain uh, channels that are popping up. I mean, they're popping up all over the place. Uh, I want I want to try and introduce you to one. 
not maybe not every episode, but I will try maybe every other episode uh, because I think that um, you know uh, Wylock's Armory did me a big favor by partnering with me on that challenge uh, in the last video. And it really brought in a, a lot of new subscribers, people who didn't know my channel. And I want to return the favor, pay it forward, so to speak, and uh, point you in the direction of some channels that I've found that are small starting out. And they could sure use your attention and your subscription if you like what you see. So right now I'm going to give a shout out to DM Dojo. DM jo <laughs> DM Dojo uh, has just started a channel specifically on 3D printing and crafting. I believe that's his intent. If he goes off from 3D printing, I apologize if I misunderstood. But um, he's got two videos out at the time I'm shooting this one. And they're both really good. Uh, one of them talks about the pros and cons of 3D printing in a crafting world, like what we do for our hobby. Uh, the second one talks about ways to, if, you're, if you've decided you like 3D printing, he offers a lot, up a lot of advice on um, properly slicing and preparing the files for the best 3D print. Uh, I actually learned some stuff. I, I'm not a I'm not a pro 3D printer. I just like doing it, uh, and I watched that second video and actually learned some stuff. Um, and so I want to point you to it. I will put a link below to that channel, and uh, hopefully you can go check his stuff out. And if you like it, subscribe. He needs uh, he needs an audience. Let's encourage him. Uh, post comments. Tell him what you like. Tell him what you don't like. I I love to hear feedback. So on my channel. So I'm sure he will too. Um, DM Jojo, uh, good luck with your, your new channel. And, uh, if I can help you in any way, please let me know. Anyway, that's it. I've got, uh, I've got a lot more big projects coming up. Uh, if you remember a few, quite a few episodes back, I told you that my 3d printer died. Well, one of the projects I was working on was the, the bunker and I couldn't print it. Uh, so when my 3d printer got fixed a few weeks back, I got working on that. I've got another big project over there that was halfway uh, it was halfway printed, but I put it on the side burner because I really wanted to get this Star Wars terrain out. Uh, I have another piece of unique Star Wars terrain that I'm I'm working on. It is 3D printed. However, I am going to try to go ahead and create an analog, you know, chipboard and foam version of it. Uh, and I'm going to try to get that out before March 22nd. I'm 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 on target for that. So look for one more. Uh, Star Wars Legion terrain episode before March 22nd when Legion is released. Long video here. I do apologize, but I thank you for your attention. And uh, this is DM Jim, and I will see you in the next episode.